Well, hey, party people. I didn't see you there, even though the camera's right here and I'm right in front of it. So in my last vlog, I talked about the nine things that I will not do in 2019. And then I promised you that I would be back to tell you about the 10 things that I do commit to. Which seems like a lot, really. But the cool thing is, by not doing those nine things this year, I'm giving myself space to do the 10 things that I really do want to do. So let me share those with you. Number one, I will focus on deep work sessions. I have been reading Cal Newport's book, Deep Work. No surprises there. And it's a fantastic read if you haven't picked it up. Essentially, Cal talks about the fact that we have become so distracted and unfocused in this new world of so much media consumption that we can't actually sit down and do things for a very long period at all. And our ability to do the deep work, which is the work that really matters and counts, has kind of gone by the wayside. Uh, he gives lots of great examples in his book about people who are doing this and they've become quite studious and I'm going to actually cover his book in another vlog because there's so many great tips. But what I am starting out with, which is one of the ways in which to do this, is to block out an hour and a half each morning between 7.30 and 9am to do deep work. So what's an example of deep work? It could be writing, it could be painting, it could be learning. Essentially, it is undistracted, focused work that allows you to dive deep, to really gather your thoughts around things and to do some deep thinking. It could be that you sit for an hour and a half and just go, hmm, I'm gonna pontificate on the meaning of deep. It's a fantastic book, more for the point that it just proves to me how ridiculous we all are becoming with this mobile phone in our hand and these constant distractions and this instant gratification mentality that we all seem to have which basically leads us to be completely unfocused anxious stressed out shallow people so I want to be deep and I want to go deep and I want to dive deep into the subjects that I'm really interested in this year particularly around human potential high performance habits and the art of learning and becoming your best self. So I've set up a couple of places in the house where I feel it's very clean, it's undistracted, it's uncluttered, and actually a place where I'm facing a wall so they don't have distractions from windows. He talks about some of the people in his book who take themselves away to a retreat or a space or a cabin or somewhere very remote so that there is no internet and no distractions. So depending on the nature of your deep work that you need to do, um, you may need to do that for yourself. And as I said, I'm gonna talk about this book more because I love it. I think it will change your life. Okay, how am I going on number one? Decent. I have at least mapped it out in my schedule and last week I hit three deep work sessions, which was what I'd scheduled in, for around an hour to an hour and a half. Now ideally it should be two to three hours and so I've started buffering those into my calendar as non-negotiables on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. So I'll let you know how that goes. Number two, I will meditate daily. Oh yeah. This one I have been crushing. I've been using the Insights Timer app, which I paid for to contribute and support them because it's free otherwise. And with the paid version, I can download meditations offline and I can also get access to courses that some of the meditation teachers are putting up. And thanks to that app, every single morning I have meditated. The first thing I do is I get up and go and get my phone because my phone is not in the bedroom. It's in another room. I bring it back in and I either sit up in bed or I lie down in bed or I sit at the foot of the bed and I meditate for at least five minutes. So I've been averaging around 10 to 15 minutes. I'm pretty much always choosing guided meditations. You can choose from stress, anxiety, relationships, focus, clarity, happiness, gratitude, romance, whatever you wish. And then you can choose the length and you can choose based on rating and you can choose whether it's guided or music or breath related. Uh, and it's been fantastic and stunning and wonderful. I think I'm on day 24 in a row. And what's more is it has this little consecutive days button, which is very, very good. It's a very good habit builder because it makes you want to do it more. And as a result of it, I've definitely been feeling calmer, even in just 23 days. And I've been choosing my behavior and my attitude to things in a much better way. It uh, doesn't mean you won't have wah moments, but for now, I'm noticing an impact. And I'm also noticing how it's just making me breathe more consciously throughout the day as an after effect. Number three, I will write three things down that I'm grateful for each day. Do you know what's really funny is until I read that in the blog post, I didn't realize that was one of them, but I've been doing it every day. So I have a very simple journal by my bed 
and every day I mark an M for meditation, a Y for yoga, and then if I've done a cycle, a swim, or a run for my triathlon training. Um, and then I also write down immediately, first thing in the morning, when I wake up just after my meditation, three things that I'm grateful for. I interchange between those, because if I wake up and I'm just grateful, I write them down. And then I'll often say them to Josh, or I'll tell them to him, and he'll tell me his back. Um, and throughout the day, I will tell people that I'm grateful for, that I'm grateful for them. And at night, I will often come back to that journal and write some more gratitude. So that in itself has been a game changer this year. Seems so simple, doesn't it? But because I'm constantly focused on things I'm grateful for, all I see is more things that I'm grateful for. So then life becomes this beautiful thing that I'm just so grateful for. Number four, I will read every day. I think I read about eight books last year and a lot of online articles and watch lots of videos, but I just thought that was pretty crap. Uh, all I ever read about is these mega successful people, and by successful I mean these people are happy, they're productive, they're thoughtful, they're doing deep work, they're putting out a ton of value in the world. That's what I measure success by, and they all read voraciously. So I'm happy to say I've been nailing this one, thanks to Audible, uh, because I have listened to about four audiobooks since the start of this year, thanks to being out in my runs and out while I'm cycling, especially on the longer trainings, and I put them on one and a half times to two times speed, and I just listen away, and then I'll come home and I'll take notes or I'll re-listen to things. So yeah, four audiobooks, and I am partway through two books, very close to finishing one of those. So this is a great January already. Highly recommend it. Another little tip was that on my bookshelf, I've put the books that I want to read, and then there's a spare shelf below where I'm starting to put the books in that I've read. So by the end of the year, that bookshelf should be full and the top one should be filled with new books that I want to read. Number five, I will paint every week. So we have a cute little studio down off the back of our barn where I've created a little art studio. We put a window in, it's just got concrete floors, simple tin walls, uh, some wooden easel, some wooden easel, so a wooden table that sort of came with it, my wooden easel that I got for second hand on Trade Me, some paints that I bought, some brushes that I bought second hand, it's amazing what you can get second hand, and canvases that are just waiting to be painted. And so I went down there at the start of the year and there was a canvas sitting there with my favourite colour on the background which is teal and teal turquoise and I painted that about eight months ago and so I decided I would paint on top of that and I created a piece of art. Well I actually have to go back and look at it. So I would say on that one I am halfway there. I would say that's progressed as we use the terminology in Life Pilot. It's either hit, progressed or missed. So it is a yellow progress right now because I got down there and I need to go back. So I might do that after this video. But that was more to pull out my creative side and to do something that completely switches my brain off and into a different mode and just lets me be. Uh, and to really, yeah, harness the inner creativity and do some deep thinking while I'm there or simply just get lost in the deep work. Number six, I will write every week on my personal blog, no matter how brief. Initially I was gonna do it every single day like Seth Godin, but Seth is a blogging god, maybe we should call him Seth Godin. Uh, he writes daily and they're very, very short, but only he can actually write so pithily in such a short, amazing, valuable way. But I am actually putting out a piece of blog content every single week, if not two, because I'm writing a full blog post for my podcast episodes, and then I'm writing my own thoughts around things that I want to share related to human potential and living your best life. So that one has been going well, and now that I've scheduled in deep work for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, that is a big part of that. It's the researching, the methodology, the writing, and also listening to books, which is really helping stimulate that. Number seven, I will join at least one mastermind in 2019. I love masterminds. They are incredible for being in a room of like-minded people who can all share their thoughts and help you out if you're stuck. Typically, these are for business, but I also kind of like them for life, business life and mindset. And so I used to run them. I've run many of them. I've been part of several. I've often organized them with my peers and then also for my clients. And so this year, I want to be a part of a couple of masterminds. So I'm actually really excited. I've already started one with a bunch of local awesome women entrepreneurs. Uh, but it's actually not just about business. It's about life and relationships. And we had our first meeting last week and it was great. And then I have organized one specifically online with two other friends. And that's going to be around YouTube marketing. 
And I really like the idea of masterminds for specific niches so that they don't have to go on for years and years and years, which some of the successful ones do, but there could be like a three month mastermind where you come together, you glean knowledge off each other, maybe even meet up in person somewhere and have a retreat and just mastermind the heck out of it. So I'll be holding more of those this year and hoping to join some more. Number eight, I will podcast weekly. So I bought back my podcast, which I finished in May last year. Thrilled to say over 10,000 downloads in the first month of bringing it back. Uh, actually in the first two weeks and that's after it being dormant for so long so woohoo thank you untapped live up to your potential that's what the whole theme is about basically it's me going on a learning exploring journey this year I'm going to be doing interviews I'm going to be doing personal updates and I'm just really thrilled that people are excited that I'm back podcasting I'm excited because one thing that I realized the podcast gave me and blogging and blogging is the discipline to turn up consistently to research to learn and to add value and with that structure of having it every week and saying you're going to commit every week, it's a beautiful thing. It just makes you show up. So tick to that. We've already released four episodes. And number nine, I will get a professional certification or qualification in 2019. And this one is because I've been a lifelong learner, but I haven't actually done a formal qualification in some time. And I'm not a big advocate of the formal education institution, so to speak, but there are some really amazing schools out there or educational organizations that aren't the traditional method and have amazing qualifications and there's just something about it that makes me want to take my level of knowledge and depth of learning to another level and formally quantify that with an actual certificate or qualification that says yes you have come up to a certain prescribed level of awesomeness now go teach go take it forth go be awesome so there is one more thing Number 10, I will live write a book in 2019. What the heck is live writing? I'm not fully sure myself, but in my mind, it means every single time I blog, every single time I podcast, every single time I am putting out any content, I'm essentially gathering the content for my new book, which is most likely gonna be called Untapped. So I want research, I want case studies, I want examples, I want to experiment on myself. And by the end of the year, I want to pull that into a book that I will put out there in December. That is my goal, that is my aim. It's big, it's juicy, it's exciting, and it gives much more purpose to all the content that I'm gonna put out there. So I hope you support it when it comes out because it'll be awesome, no doubt, because you'll be in it. That's it for me. What is one thing that you are committing to and saying yes to in 2019? Let me know in the comments.